So in this video, I'm going to be talking about arithmetic functions. Arithmetic functions are especially important in analytic number theory, and most of the functions that we're going to be looking at in this series are going to be arithmetic functions. So let's just start with a definition. An arithmetic function is just any function f which maps the natural numbers to the complex numbers, or some subset of the complex numbers. And here by the natural numbers, I just mean the positive integers, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and, and so on. So let's have a simple example of an arithmetic function. So let's consider the uh, u, the unit function, u of n equals 1 for all natural numbers n. So these are all the positive integers n. So for instance, u of 1 equals 1, u of 2 equals 1, u of 10 million equals 1, you get the idea. So this is an arithmetic function because it takes every natural number to the number 1. Now this is a very simple function. And you might be wondering, why would we consider such uh, trivial functions like this? But it's actually quite important. In fact, we say that this function u is the inverse to the Mobius function with respect to the Dirichlet uh, convolution. But don't worry about what all that means right now. So what kinds of properties might arithmetic functions have? Or what kinds of properties might uh, they, what kinds of properties might be desirable is what I'm saying. Well, a very important property is the notion of a function to be multiplicative. So what does multiplicative mean? So we said that a function f is multiplicative if f of a b equals f of a times f of b whenever a and b are natural numbers, so a positive integers, and a and b are co-prime. So by the way, um, when I write something like this, a comma b in brackets equals one, that means a and b are co-prime integers. Or in other words, they're relatively prime. That is to say that they don't share any common factors. So just to give you a quick example, so for instance, 2 and 5, um, these are co-prime because 2 and 5 don't share any common factors. But on the other hand, if I had 2 and 4, these are not co-prime because 2 and 4 have a common factor of 2. So um, in other words, the greatest common divisor of these two numbers is not 1. And the way we usually write this uh, to say that two numbers are not co-prime is that we usually write this as greater than 1, as is tradition. There's actually a stronger condition for a function to be multiplicative. So we also say that a function is totally multiplicative if f of a b equals f of a times f of b for all natural numbers a and b. So this is exactly the same thing as uh, the definition of a multiplicative function, except we've dropped this condition here. It's not necessarily true that numbers need to be co-prime. So in this case, a and b do not have to be co-prime. And obviously, um, if, an, if a function is totally multiplicative, then it's also multiplicative. But it's not necessarily true that if a function is multiplicative, then it's totally multiplicative. So it's true one way, but not necessarily the other. So let's have an example. So let's have an example. Let's consider the function that I just showed you. So let's have an example. So let's look at the function u of n equals 1. That's the unit function, this strange Dirichlet inverse function. Let's see if this is actually a multiplicative function. Well, what is u of a times b, where a and b are integers? Well, if a and b are integers, uh, positive integers, then so is a b. And if a, and if a times b is a natural number or a positive integer, then this has got to be 1 by definition of u. Likewise, u of a times u of b, well, what is that? Well, u of a is 1 because a is chosen to be a natural number. And likewise, u of b is also equal to 1. Therefore, 1 times 1 is 1. And so clearly, we see that u of a b, so u of a b, equals u of a times u of b. And so u is definitely a multiplicative function. And not only is it a multiplicative function, it's also totally multiplicative, because I didn't actually use the property that a and b had to be co-prime. It's actually true for all natural numbers a and b. So u is not just multiplicative, but it's also totally multiplicative. So there are some other ways in which we can also describe arithmetic functions. For instance, we consider that a function is also additive. So f is an additive function, 
So f is arithmetic. So f is additive. If f of a b equals f of a plus f of b, so instead of a times here, we've got a plus, whenever a and b are natural numbers and a and b are co-prime. And just as before, um, we can have an even stronger condition on an f. We can say that f is totally additive. If f of a b equals f of a plus f of b, so exactly the same thing, if it's true for all a and b, not just co-prime ones. So let's see if that function we described before is an additive function. So let's look at an example. Example. Let's look at u of n equals 1. All right, well, is this an additive function? Well, let's look at u of a, b. Well, I've just shown you that that's 1, because if a and b are natural numbers, then so is a, b. What about u of a plus u of b? So u of a plus u of b. Well, a is a natural number, so u of a equals 1. And likewise, u of b is also equal to 1. But 1 plus 1 is 2. And that means that u of a, b is not equal to u of a plus u of b. So u of a, b is not equal to u of a plus u of b. Because on this side, we've got 1. And on this side, we've got 2. And uh, 1 is not equal to 2. So u is definitely not an additive function. So that was my video on arithmetic functions. If you like what you saw, then make sure you like this video, comment and subscribe, and make sure to check out our Facebook and Twitter pages in the description box below. So see you next time.